Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Care Love Ministries. I'm Dana. Hey, today we're going to tackle a topic that's close to many hearts, quite literally. We're going to be talking about bouncing back after a heart attack. It's a journey filled with challenges, but also it's going to be immense possibilities for positive change. If you or someone you love has experienced a heart attack, you know it's a life-altering event. But it's also a call to action, a chance to reset, rethink, and rebuild your life for a better tomorrow. We're going to explore the practical steps and the motivational tips to help you regain control and thrive on a post heart attack. You know, people, this is something that nobody talks about. They want to talk about medications. They want to talk about everything else, but nobody understands your situation. I mean, first thing is first, understand what it is that you've been through. I mean, it's a heart attack. It's a signal from your body that something needs to change. And it's okay to feel a range of emotions, fear, frustrations, relief. You know, even being a hypochondriac, I did. I can tell you that when I had my heart attack, that I became, I went from up here to down here. I went from an individual that was really confident to a person that, am I having a heart attack? And rushing to the hospital. Now, I finally acknowledge these feelings. They're a normal part of a healing process. You've got to go through them. If you don't go through them, you're never going to recover. You're never going to move forward. Now, the biggest thing that I had to do is I had to look and follow up with my lifestyle. Because we're going to talk recovery, people. Now, in the beginning, you're going to get this medical team, and they're going to guide you through this physical healing process and medication. And they're going to load you on it. But at first... And there's going to be a lot of naysayers out there. I know, and there's going to be a lot of people to comment back at me on this one, but I'm sorry. Follow their advice in the beginning. Take the medication in the beginning. You need to. Because you cannot move forward unless you get yourself mentally capable to move forward. So for the first year, I took all of the medications that they gave me. I took the blood thinners, the beta blockers. Uh, I even took the statins. But after that year, get off of it, especially the statin. Because statins will make you feel old. I was 58 when I had my heart attack. And I'll tell you, I felt like I was 80 years old while I was on all of this medication. I mean, I went from 250 pounds. I'm down now to 164. I went from somebody who never works out in the gym to someone who does. I now work out six days a week. Not bad. So let's talk about lifestyle changes and how that plays a huge role. Now, this is going to be you're eating a heart healthy diet, and you're going to hear this a lot a heart healthy diet. And of course, you're going to hear getting regular exercise, but you know, I have to be transparent with y'all. I wasn't going to exercise in the beginning. I was 250 pounds. I was not feeling well. I did not want to work out at all. And in fact, before I even had my heart attack, I didn't really want to get off the couch. Now, 
you can't get me to sit still. Now, a lot of you people out there that are smoking, I know it's hard to quit, but I did. Quitting smoking is going to reduce a lot of issues. You also have to reduce your stress. Do not stress out over stuff. It is what it is, people. Let it go. Don't worry about it. Just move on. These aren't just recommendations, people. Champions, these are going to be your new best friends. Now, one of the biggest things I say is that if you have a doctor that is not working with you, well, guess what? You have the ability to fire a doctor and move to a different one. Find a cardiologist that works with you into the realm of what you want to do. Do not take the advice of somebody and just go, okay, and jump onto the big pharma wagon. Now, I'm not telling you to make any changes without your doctor. I'm telling you to find a doctor that will work with you that will understand that it's just not a physical issue that you're that happened to you, but it was also an, an emotional and it is also a mental health thing because healing just isn't the physical part. Our minds emotionally, I mean, think about it. Our mental, you know, issue at this point don't hesitate to talk to a family member. Share with your family and your loved ones and confide in them just about getting back where you were. Now, I don't want to be back where I was. I was 250 pounds. I don't want anything to do with that. But I do want to be healthy. And I had to get over being a hypochondriac. I'm sorry it happened to me. If you're out there and saying it never happened to me, hey, kudos to you. I'm glad that it worked. But to a lot of people, that does happen. So this brings us to setting new goals. I mean, after a heart attack, you are going to have a priority shift. And that's perfectly okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to set achievable goals, people. You champions, you're going to just get health, better health. Get some hobbies, your relationships. You know, small, consistent steps. Take baby steps, champions, because you are a champion and the reason why i call everybody a champion is because you just overcame a heart attack you're a champion you're a survivor and right now if you are watching vi this video because you had a heart attack and you don't know what to do because of everything going on in your body it gets better just make slow changes don't change anything significantly. The first thing you want to change is probably your diet. That's your significant change right there. So you just want to stay motivated. Okay. It's tough. It really is tough on, especially on certain days. I don't know what it is, but I had days where I just couldn't, uh, they were just tough. That's all I can say. But I developed a support network. And do me a favor. When you make a, when you make it progress, celebrate your progress and remind yourself why you started this. Remind yourself this is not a race that you're running to a finish line. This is about you embracing a healthier life so that you can be happy. So I want you to remember this. Every heart attack survivor journey is going to be unique. Be patient with yourself. 
embrace the support of your family and everybody around you and trust the, in the strength within you. You've got this champion. And I'm here for you every step of the way. Just remember this. Slow steps. Slow progress. Talk to your doctor. Just don't take medication. If you're on Avastatin, get off of it. If you're on anything with statin at the end of it, get off of it. Talk to your doctor about other avenues, other ways that you can get things done. And let me tell you, if you have a doctor that says that your cholesterol level needs to be at 70, no, it doesn't. Because let me ask you a question. I'm 6'2". I have gigantic bone structure. And my joints are very big. I've had two hip replacements and they've told me they had to go to the biggest size on the hip replacement to be able to replace my hips. So my question is this, if I'm six two and I've got elongated organs, I've got elongated heart, I've got elongated uh, lungs. Does that mean that my body has to operate on 70 level on cholesterol? So that, does that mean my LDL needs to be at 70? No. I mean, my LDL right now is at 120. And the doctor's happy with it. I'm happy with it. My total cholesterol, I'm sitting at 199. Now, I will not go on statins at all. So if the doctor notices that my cholesterol is going to go any higher, well, I've already instructed to the doctor that we're going to have to have a conversation and we're going to have to do research on non-statin medication to lower my cholesterol because statins is out of the equation. It's not going to happen. Just not going to. I mean, there are three medications that I know of right now that are not statins that work with the body to lower your cholesterol. Ask your doctor about them. Your doctor is aware of these medications. And when I go to my doctor and I bring it up, well, they get shocked and they want to know how I know about them. Just ask them about the non-statin medications that lower cholesterol. It's their medications that work with your body to break down the cholesterol and does not deposit anything in your joints or anything. So make sure you talk to them and remember your doctor works for you. You do not work for your doctor. And until next time. Oh, one more thing before I go. Do you guys like the dog and animal videos I'm posting? I'm posting those because I want everybody to know that you have to have a relaxation. My animals are my relaxation. They keep me from stressing. They are my cuddle bunnies, you can say. And yes, I said cuddle bunnies. So that's why you're seeing animal videos get posted because they are the love of my life. So is my wife. Um, the other thing is, is comment down below, like the videos and Oh, subscribe. I see a lot of people watching the videos, not some subscribers. I'd like to keep this channel going for everybody, um, to keep my journey on here. Um, cause every time I go to the doctor, I do put a doctor update in here. But in the meantime, if there's also anything you would like me to discuss, anything you would like me to go over, leave a comment down below and I'll make a video about it. So I look forward to next time. Everybody stay strong. Remember, make those doctors work for you and never, ever give up. Take care.